What's going on retro gaming fans and welcome to Rehab Gaming, the channel where you can figure out all the tips and tricks to get your retro gaming systems back up and running. In this series called Repair Skills, we're going to be sharing the tips and tricks that you can use not just for repairing retro consoles, but also for repairing any other electronic device. It's going to cover topics such as soldering, circuit component basics, uh, SMD components, and other like topics. In this episode, we're going to discuss how we use your standard household vinegar to deactivate rust on our retro gaming screws and parts and RF shielding in order to make sure that that rust does not spread throughout the system. So stay tuned and we'll get right at it. What I have here is some RF shielding for a Sega Genesis Model 1. And as you can tell, this system has been stored in an area that had a lot of moisture, and unfortunately that moisture caused rust to appear on the shielding and propagate throughout the entire shielding surface. And as we zoom in down here, you can see where this rust is actually starting to eat through this top protective layer and get down into the base metal. Now, what you can do is you can use your standard household vinegar in order to solve these issues and to get a little abrasiveness action to get this flaking rust up off of there, you can use your standard steel wool Brillo pad. Just to show you that this does work, I actually have quite a few screws from that Sega Model 1 console that has been soaking in vinegar for a little while now. We're going on about 96 hours total and we've actually swapped out the vinegar a couple of times in order to make sure that the vinegar was not oversaturated in that oxide so that the vinegar could go to work at eating away at this rust and deactivating it. Let's actually discuss how the process of vinegar eating away at this rust causes the rust to become deactivated. So vinegar is actually a acid-based compound and that acid reacts with the rust on whatever part that is soaking in it and it causes that rust to go through a chemical reaction process and during this chemical reaction process it actually inhibits that rust process as the rust is actually eating away at the metal and the oxidation process causing that to spread throughout the part and once that rust is deactivated it actually leaves a protective coating on the outside of that metal surface. So I'm actually going to use a example from the real world that some of you might be able to relate to. Uh, firearms, for example, have what's called a bluing chemical reaction process applied to the metal in order for that metal to have a exterior coating on the outside to kind of protect it from rust and inhibit rust from forming under proper care. Now the vinegar is doing something similar to what's being used in that process. During the bluing process, they take a stronger base acid and they actually coat the entire metal surface where that acid has a chemical reaction to the metal causing a layer to be built up on the outside of that metal. And as this process continues, after you rinse off the acid, the metal continues to react a little bit and it starts going from being a blued metallic finish down to being a black metallic finish. So for our particular example with removing the rust and treating screws from a console, I have a couple of cups up here that is full of vinegar that was used to treat these screws. So this first cup that you see right here, I marked 24, this is what the vinegar looked like 24 hours after the screws had been soaking in the vinegar compound. And as you look down there at the bottom, you can actually see a little bit of that rust flake that came off the screws. So after the 24 hours, I went ahead and poured out that vinegar, dried off the parts, brushed off all the loose rust material from the screws, 
put fresh vinegar back in and let it soak for additional 24 hours. And so that's where this cup on the right hand side comes in. So I marked it with 48 to designate that this was the 48 hour mark that these particular screws had been soaking in the vinegar. Now as you can see, it's got a little bit of a foam to it. It's got that nice orange rust color to it. And there's actually still a little bit of flaking that's down here on the bottom. And part of that flaking is caused by the paint of these screws also being removed from the screw surface and being dislodged so that the vinegar can get to the rust a little better and treat that metal. Now, with this jar here, this is the 96 hour point. You can see the little waviness of black down there. That is actually mainly the paint residue that has been left on the screws that came off. And this little uh, grayish tinge here is actually what that used to look like at the 48 hour mark before it was exposed to air. So what happens is, is that the uh, chemical process breaks down the rust. The rust becomes saturated in the vinegar and the metal becomes treated after the fact and the rust that's remaining on the metal becomes transformed into a protective coating. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dump these screws out here and we're gonna brush them off with a brass brush. And just real quick, before we actually brush the rest of the rust off of the screws and get them all back to a condition where they can be reused and installed in the console, I went ahead and dumped out the second cup that was the 48 hour mark for the screws soaking in the vinegar. And I don't know how well you can tell, we're gonna try and zoom up in here and get you a little better uh, view of the rust particles, especially right here on the side of the cup. So you see all that granulated orange color right there. That's actually the rust particles that were removed from the screws and you can see it's actually suspended in the bottom of the cup as well. So this is just to show that this rust is actually being eaten away from the screws and being lifted off of that base metal so the underlying metal can be treated in this chemical process. All right, so we got these screws dumped out onto a towel, dabbed them off a little bit, and as you can see, we have a couple of small springs over here. These springs are actually for the door mechanism for this Sega Genesis Model 1, and they were also covered in rust. And we'll go ahead and lift it up right here, and as you can tell, that spring is made of a very thin metal. Now to show you that this process is safe, I went ahead and treated these springs. Now the other thing to remember is that when you are treating these metal parts, there is a fine layer of metal that is being eaten away by the vinegar during this process. So there is a possibility that if there is too much rust on springs like this, it may actually eat through the spring itself, or you may actually have to wind up the spring a little more when you put it back in so you get the proper tension on it. Now let's go ahead and pick up one of these longer screws. This is one of the exterior screws for that Sega Genesis Model 1 and we'll get it over here to a little bit better backdrop. So give us some more light over here where well, you can see it a little better. Drop you down in and we'll take a look at this screw. As you can see, this screw has a little bit of a gray tint to it. So during the process of the rust being deactivated by the vinegar and actually eating away at the oxide compound, it turns it a different color and it makes this metal a little bit of a grayish color. Now we'll go ahead and pick up one of the smaller screws that's used on the inside for the RF shielding. And this is actually one that was coated in black paint. So the black paint protected most of it. It was actually a higher quality paint than this paint that was used on the exterior screws. But our main concern, especially with this one, is the rust that was in the head. Once you get all of that surface rust deactivated and you brush off the remaining residue on the screw, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of gun oil and soak the screws in gun oil. It doesn't necessarily have any specific time as long as 
all of the screws, crevices, and the threads, and inside the head of the screw is coated with the oil, and then you wipe off the excess oil with a cloth. So, once we got them all brushed down, got them coated in oil, this is what that case screw looks like now. And so what that oil is going to do, it's going to try and prevent any more rust from accumulating on these screws, and especially on the outer case screws, they're going to be the ones to be exposed to more humidity and uh, oxygen moisture and stuff like that, that's going to exacerbate a rust issue. Now with the internal screws, as you can tell, a lot of them still have paint on them. Uh, some of them, the paint has actually worked its way off during the brushing process. So that's why it's always a good idea to make sure you put another barrier on the screws, like some type of oil, in order to make sure that the screws are protected against further oxidation. Now these uh, springs right here for the cartridge slot doors, they actually turned out pretty good. They're uh, a little bit dark tint because of the chemical reaction process with the vinegar and then we brushed them off and we gave them a good soak in oil. I like to, uh, when I'm cleaning them off and cleaning the excess oil off, wear rubber gloves. That way I'm not absorbing all of that garbage and whatever oxide residues that are still on the screws into the skin. So it's always a good thing that when you're working with something that's completely rusty, uh, just go ahead and use a uh, pair of gloves. Uh, believe it or not, if you have too much exposure to rust where it actually gets in the system, via a cut or more commonly where somebody steps on a rusty nail, it can cause something that is called lockjaw, and that is an involuntary muscle spasm where your jaw locks into place. And it's the body's way of reacting to the rust oxides. So it's always a good idea when you're doing something hazardous during these projects, wear a good pair of gloves. Also it's recommended during soldering. Nine times out of 10, I don't use gloves. I should probably use them a little more often, but when I'm dealing with certain stuff like this, if I plan on you know, being exposed to it for an extended period of time, I'm definitely gonna put some gloves on. So other than that, that's gonna conclude today's video. Thank you for joining us and sticking around and figuring out how we get rust off of our retro consoles. So that wraps it up for this project. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget, we have our own Facebook page and Twitter, and we will have those links in the video description down below. So without further ado, thank you for stopping by, and we hope you have a wonderful day.